Nestled in the blistering heat of Scottsdale, Arizona, the Elmcor Life Extension Foundation is putting cold to the test in an ultimate science experiment. They are preserving cryo patients, or frozen cadavers and heads, in liquid nitrogen. The people who participate in this when they are preserved are declared legally dead. They come to Alcor via an anatomical donation. However, we consider them to be patients because it reflects the philosophy of the organization, that we're here to protect them and bring them to the time where modern medicine catches up with their dreams. It's called cryonics, and it's a process in which a person is preserved at cryogenic temperatures in the hopes of future revival. Some scientists give Alcor's deep freeze endeavor a lukewarm response. So far we've not had a demonstrable experiment in which we've actually shown that a person or a, even an animal fully dead for any long period of time is able to be fully revived. At this point, uh, the theory of cryonics is just that, it's theory. Even so, Alcor currently has 825 members ready and willing to be chilled to the bone. And the process can be done on their entire body or just the brain. A brain preservation is $80,000. A whole body procedure is $150,000. Most people pay that through a life insurance policy. Annual dues are paid until the patient is preserved. It is $518 a year. The cooling process begins as soon as the patient is declared legally dead. This is Alcor's mobile surgical unit that we have outfitted especially for our stabilization protocols. Now this is an ice bath. This begins the most important step in a stabilization process, which is cooling. We do it through simple surface cooling at this point, covering a patient in ice. At this point, a heart-lung resuscitator restores blood circulation and breathing. And Elcor technicians inject medications to slow the deterioration of cells. Next, the technicians replace the blood with an organ preservation solution specially designed to lower the temperature of the body. As the blood comes out, the patient cools. It takes about 45 minutes to get them to just above freezing. Once at Alcor, workers transfer the so-called cryo patient to an operating room. Here, the body temperature is reduced to minus three degrees Celsius. And so what we've done here is built an enclosure where we circulate nitrogen vapor using a computer-controlled system to maintain the minus three degrees. Once the patient is here, we wash out the organ preservation solution and we replace it with a vitrification solution. This solution will draw out about 60% of the water in the body. Alcor uses this vitrification solution because outside experiments have shown that it reduces ice formation within the body that would crush and damage cells. Next, workers place the cryo patient in the cool down area, a large rectangular box that circulates nitrogen gas at minus 125 degrees Celsius. After three hours, the cryo patient vitrifies or reaches a stable ice-free state. Workers then strap the cryo patient into an aluminum pod and place it in a temporary doer for the final phase of cooling. The last stage, the one that takes a really long time, is the reduction in the patient's temperature under controlled circumstances, one degree an hour, all the way to liquid nitrogen, which is minus 196 Celsius. After chilling for about 10 days, the cryo patient is finally ready for permanent storage. That was the case on July 30th, 2007, for this real cryo patient. We have completed the cool down on our 78th patient. And what we're going to do here is transfer this person from the cool down doer into the longer term care doer. Raising the pod out of the temporary doer exposes the cryo patient to room temperature. The transfer must be fast, precise, and gentle. Once in place, cryo patient number 78 is ready to endure the deep freeze in Alcor's patient care bay, indefinitely. And it's here that the most famous cryopreserved patient, baseball player Ted Williams, rests. But what about Walt Disney? Unfortunately, Walt Disney was not preserved. Although the rumor has been out there for a long time, it is untrue. 
Cryonics is certainly intriguing, but can it work? I'm a skeptic. I personally don't think that it will work. Right now it's experimental. Almost if you want to categorize it, it's, it's a religion of sorts because they have a faith that it will work, even though you have no evidence that it has worked. But the Alcor faithful believe future medicine may enable repair and regeneration of damaged tissues, decades or even centuries in the future. The current hope for our patients is medical nanotechnology, advanced technology that can go into the body and repair it on a cell-by-cell -cell basis. There are hundreds of labs around the world working towards those goals, and so we're fairly optimistic that it will be developed. Until then, the plan is for these cryo patients to hang in cold's icy grip. And only time will tell if this frosty experiment, like so many others in the world of extreme cold, will lead to undreamed of success. Lift off.